Well, they survived. Sort of. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today it's Road to the Scale Nationals debrief. We're going to go through both trucks, uh, class one, class two, slash three, and see how they did. And how I did. Or how they didn't do. <laughs> I. <w> Let <laughs> me start by saying thank you to the organizers, volunteers, judges, sponsors, and all the competitors at the Axial Scale Nationals in Leesburg, Alabama. It was an amazing experience. I had a fantastic time. I met so many new friends and reconnected with some old ones. It was a really great opportunity and I'm very appreciative for the ability to have been able to go down there. 1600 miles round trip. It was a long way. Uh, totally worth it though. And uh, I had an amazing time. The goal was never to win. That was not going to happen. I am not a nationals level competitor <laughs> at the best of times. But the goal was to go down and have an amazing time. And I definitely did that. Uh, I have to give a special thanks to Josh uh, from Harley Designs Inc. for helping me be my stick man. As you may or may not know, at a nationals level event, they usually have a winch stick that has a little hook in the bottom of it. And uh, it's basically the best, easiest, and most consistent way to winch in an event like this. And I was no stranger to winching. Winching got used a lot in this competition. Uh, but before I get too far into that, let's go and take a look at each individual truck. Class 1 is a great place to start. And here it is. It's still kind of a truck. It still looks like a truck, and that's good. <laughs> it got beat on, though. There's no doubt about that. And if I'm honest, this really shouldn't have been my choice for bodies for a Class 1 competition truck. It's certainly narrow enough, and uh, it did very well in that regard. Uh, but it's still way too top-heavy. Um, I didn't have to go as deep on the drop bed as I did. Uh, there were a lot of things that I would probably do differently. Uh, but, but before we get into that, let's take an overall kind of uh, inventory of what still remains on the truck. Uh, as you can see, it's missing a few of the exterior elements. I wasn't counting the mirrors as part of my scale points, so I wisely took them off after the concourse event. If you don't need them, don't run them. Because at this event, if any piece falls off your truck, it's a 10 point touch penalty. You have to go back to the previous gate that you completed and start again. So uh, it's not a good idea to have things fall off. As I discovered, <laughs> both the front and rear glass came out. This is just being <laughs> held on here right now. Uh, both of those pieces came off. And when those pieces came off, I took the penalty and had to start back at the previous gate. That happened on two different courses, so 20 points just for that. It's really annoying. Plus, you can't just carry this with you, you have to stick it somewhere in the truck and pray to God it doesn't fall out again. <laughs> Which, luckily it didn't. I wedged them in there pretty good. Uh, but as you can see, lots of rash, lots of rollovers, <laughs> lots of scraping up against rocks and uh, Lots of, uh, lots of bits and pieces missing. For the most part, though, it held together. Both windshield wipers are still on. I consider that a win. Uh, I think both, yeah, both door handles are still on the truck. This one's just holding on. Thank goodness for shoe goo. I didn't do what I told Josh to do, and that's use glue and glaze to put all these windows in. I should have used glue and glaze. It's a lot better. Um, what else can I tell you? Well, everything else held together. Oh, except for the roof. <laughs> that is a bit of a problem. Um, very interestingly, this was not along the actual print lines. Print lines were vertical for this piece and this piece. So uh, that was quite an aggressive hit. And I'm pretty sure that that hit was right here uh, on the, the front A-pillar, which caused 
the whole thing to crack. Didn't crack all the way off though, so that's pretty good. Still, it hurt to have that happen. <laughs> uh, there's also a pretty major structural crack in the, uh, the bed there as well. Uh, but otherwise, held together, stayed on the body, all of the fenders are intact and didn't come off. My plastic welding method seemed to work pretty well. And there were no mechanical failures. The Holmes brushed uh, ESC and motor were fantastic, just the right amount of torque and wheel speed. Uh, and the Reef's IS800 internal winch was a godsend. It worked fantastically well. Uh, I powered that, I think, at 7.4 volts. Could have gone up to 8.4. Uh, the BEC is programmable. I just decided to kind of uh, minimize any risk to my electronics and go with 7.4 volts. It held up fantastically well and is very strong. Uh, if only there was a bit more speed in it, I think it would be a perfect winch. Uh, but aside from that, it was an amazing electronics experience. And the chassis underneath, this brazen scale C1 Pro chassis was fantastic. I really think that for me, the biggest letdown for me performance wise was using a big heavy 3D printed body. Not one other printed body was being used at Scale Nats, as far as I could tell. There were a lot of competitors. More than 100, and I know that because I finished in 100th place. <laughs> I think I beat uh, four, four people who didn't start and a little girl. So take that, little girl. I beat you. <laughs> um, yeah, I knew I wasn't going to go in and win any uh, national level awards with this truck. Um, but... I did have a build standard and I stuck to it and I'm still pretty thrilled with the result. The chassis was fantastic though, brazen scale chassis with the uh, Vanquish portals I think is a really great setup. I just need to go for a much more lightweight and probably shorter body. There's just still far too much overhang in the rear there. Lost a tail light as well. Uh, actually I have it, but it's been cracked off and doesn't want to stay anymore. That's it, I think, for damage. Um, what would I do differently? Definitely not run this body. Uh, definitely run something lighter. Uh, there were so many Hilux bodies there, it was insane. Uh, I think that would probably be my choice going forward, too. Uh, or maybe I do use something like this, but just modify the uh, STL before I print. Maybe lower that whole roof height about 50%. And... Um, maybe even bob the bed further and go for a shorter wheelbase. I think the 12-ish, 12.3-ish wheelbase on this truck was a bit long for class one. Uh, I did find myself in a lot of situations where I just could not get myself turned around fast enough, uh, even with a little wiggle. Um, so that would be something I think I would do differently uh, as well. One final, one final note, this front bumper Whilst it looked pretty good and was within the letter of the rules, I probably should have gone shorter. I caught myself up on these edges a number of times on the rocks. And if I had just done the bare minimum, which I should have done, it would have been a much better performing truck. But there you go. That's class one. Uh, my thanks to Brazen for sending the C1 Pro chassis. It's fantastic. Uh, I would really like to use it again. So uh, what I might end up doing is getting rid of this body entirely and um, putting something else on it because I really do want to run this again and I want to give it a fair shot with a proper comp setup. So there you go, that's class one. Oh. He listened a little bit better, which we... <laughs> <laughs> There's still a little disconnect between us. Nice. We got, he got there, he, listened, he did what I said. Once. I know he finished <laughs> proud dad proud dad proud dad moment <laughs> okay and now class two slash three this one definitely held up a bit better it was certainly more purpose-built for competition and this big roll cage all this metal work really helped keep the body intact and I didn't roll it over as many times I don't think there was actually any there was a cut uh, that's true there were a couple rollovers uh, but nothing as dramatic as class one. And uh, again, no mirrors, didn't have the mirrors on there. Seemed to have lost a door handle um, and smashed the heck out of a lot of the uh, resin printed accessories. But for the most part, this truck is intact. It is, however, missing all of the electronics. 
I'll get to that in a second. Let's go through the rest of the truck. Hyrax tires were definitely the tires of the weekend. Uh, I think nearly every competitor was running some flavor of them. I think the Predator compound worked better on the first two days and not as well on the third day. The first two days were extremely cold, almost freezing temperatures, which I was not expecting or anticipating. So it was chilly. We had to stop at Tractor Supply Company to get some gloves and beanies or toques if you're a Canadian viewer. But yeah, the Predator compound worked better on the colder days when it warmed up, not as effective. It actually kind of, I found it, I actually found it to be folding over itself a fair bit, even with a good set of Crawler Innovations foams. So um, I would probably move to the G8 compound uh, going forward, uh, certainly for the rest of the summer, uh, it's gonna be warm and the G8 harder compound is gonna work a lot better in those situations. Uh, the rear cage, uh, very happy to report that I won an award. Best tube work. That's pretty cool. I have to say that was unexpected. I think I was probably one of the only people with any tube work. So <laughs> it was the obvious choice or the only choice, uh, but very honored to receive that award. I thought that was pretty cool. I am very happy with how that cage turned out and uh, the TGH Team Garage Hack Sherpa chassis was exceptional. Very much more planted. Uh, this is, again, too heavy of a truck for class two or three. Uh, it really did kind of get itself bogged down a fair bit. And um, that's because it's so heavy and certainly a lot more top heavy than a lot of the other competitors. I really kind of, again, focused a little bit more on the looks and less on the performance. And had I not done that, I probably would have had a better performing truck. Class two, I think I finished somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 or 70th place out of about 130 competitors. So a much more positive result in class two. Uh, again, the windshield came out, shocker. Uh, I, shouldn't have, uh, I shouldn't have done what I did and followed my own advice and used glue and glaze instead of CA. Sometimes it takes a good hard hit to realize you've done something wrong. Uh, you can see there is a fair bit of rash as well. Uh, the truck did get abused and beat up a fair bit. Some significantly good scratches uh, in the paint uh, and uh, on the roof and the A-pillar. For the most part though, it's held together. There's no significant body cracks or damage anywhere. Uh, nothing that can't be repaired. You know what I think? Sometimes scars add character. Exactly. Uh, the cage held up. No, uh, no problems there. The powder coating really helped keep it looking pretty clean too. Uh, it did get a fair number of hits, but uh, all held together, looking really good. Nice solid truck. I'm pretty happy with how that this one did in class two. Oh, the first man stayed with it. That's uh, some true character there. Just went for it. You know what it's about? Fun. Yeah. That was pretty fun. <laughs> class three, however, bit of a letdown. <laughs> Class three is a very difficult class and uh, it's not easy with a big heavy truck like this. I really should have tried harder to make it a lighter, more competitive truck by keeping the weight down. A couple of things happened. On the first course, the uh, cable that connects the four wheel steer servo on the back got caught up in the tire and actually unplugged itself. So I had to take a one minute time penalty and a five point touch to get the truck repaired. I could do that on course though, because it only took me less than a minute. So got that wired back up, back on the course and finished it almost. By about the seventh gate, the truck seemed to be browning itself out and I couldn't really figure out why because it worked perfectly fine in all four courses in class two. Uh, so there was an electrical gremlin in there somewhere. Didn't finish the first course, didn't finish the second course, didn't finish the third course. And then on the fourth course, I decided to go to 4S. Cause I was like, if I'm not getting enough power on 3S, let's go big. <laughs> we winched through the first gate and then the magic smoke came out. For whatever reason, hard to describe, hard to duplicate, uh, the BEC blew and uh, fried everything. Um, left a very noxious odor. So I just tossed the whole uh, thing cut all the electronics right out of the truck and um, toss them in the trash because uh, I didn't want to bring that home with me for 800 miles of stinkiness. So we'll never really know what happened there, unfortunately. Again, TGH 
Amazing job on this chassis. Really appreciated your support and loved driving this truck. I really, like class two, I think uh, I did a much better job of creating a little more comp style truck. Would there be things I would do differently? Yes, there are a lot of things I would do differently. Not necessarily in the electronics though. I really did like that setup with the Crawlmaster Mini and the uh, brushless Outrunner 2200 kV motor. I thought that was a perfect amount of speed. Uh, nice and quiet on that ESC too. Um, I'm gonna check out the V2 ESC and see if that one works any better. But in terms of the design of the truck, um, I think I would probably go a lot more lightweight, not focus so much on all this heavy cage work. A lot of people are using eighth inch and not this 3 16 uh, so um, they really do kind of save a lot of weight, still get some nice looking tube work, but just on a much smaller scale, which keeps the weight down. This is definitely a heavy truck. It's like seven pounds-ish more, or more actually, uh, once it's all said and done. And that's probably too much. Um, the other thing I would do, front bumper. Um, scale metal supplies, supplies were fantastic, uh, but it just stuck out way too far. Um, it's in line with the tires and it doesn't need to be. It could have been shoved way back. I should have ground off all of this extra stuff I don't need uh, because that would have helped significantly in the clearance department. I did get hung up a lot on that front bumper, which was annoying to say the very least. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. I really did like the setup. I like this chassis a lot and uh, I would, uh, I would definitely do something with this one again. Class 3 was obviously a bit bigger of a disappointment uh, with four DNFs. <laughs> I was not going to be anywhere close to the podium. Uh, but the drivers who were on the podium, uh, all of them were amazing competitors. It was so cool to watch them drive. Uh, they are masters at their craft and it was really fun to watch. Uh, it was an excellent event, and I highly recommend you checking one out. Uh, if there is any sort of scale comp in your area, go check it out. See if this is for you. I'm hooked again. I really am. Uh, it was a blast. Not just at the actual competition, but seeing people and meeting new friends and meeting old friends. It was definitely worth all the driving and uh, all the stress to get these trucks done in time. It was a blast and I thank all of you if you came up to say hi I appreciate it immensely thank you so much for that and if you liked seeing me there maybe you should like this video the algorithm says the more likes the better this video will do so hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the scale builders guild there will be more comping this year I just have to find some comps to go to. If you have a good idea for a comp or you have one in your area that you think I should check out, put it down in the comments below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. Okay, on that note, I think it's probably time to clean these trucks up a little bit. Maybe give them a couple of coats of paint or maybe we'll just clear it. We'll clear coat and just leave everything as it is and uh, move on and make some new trucks. Um, so yeah. There you go. This was a fun time we had here. Yeah, this is a really good time. How does everybody do? We got five minutes to do. Hey, Matt, I really think we found your problem. Yeah. It's the ESC. It's the smelly part. It's smells. Damn, that smells good. You have like a 14 hour drive. 438 with this fuel bag. With this new pine cone air freshener. Did progress one? He did. Yeah, he did. Progress around one. All right. Negative two. Yes. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for the entire journey that this has been. It's been very fun and uh, the Road to Scale Nationals will be back. That's probably going to be a yearly series, let's be honest. Uh, and if you haven't, you should go check out Josh's videos. His trucks were amazing and he's an excellent driver and coach. He yells at me more than my dad did. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon.